Welcome back as we take a look at Navy basketball, putting a wrap up on the 2012-2013 season and looking certainly forward to the 13-14 year where the Patriot League is going to look uh, really different. It's going to be a different landscape as we're joined now by head coach Ed DeCellis. And, you know, let, let's talk about this this year as a whole. And, and obviously there was progress for this basketball team from year one to year two for you, your staff, and, and obviously this growth process that is taking place with an extremely young basketball team. I know we, we, we look at the results. We look at the results hard. And as you look within those results, and, and you and the staff have had a chance now to break down the way a, a lot of these guys played, uh, your thoughts, especially the progress that clearly some of them uh, made for you, especially in the second half of the league season? Well, Pete, we, we did make progress. I, I don't, the progress isn't what we all want as a staff. You know, in terms of wins, we've won more games than we won the previous year, but that's not uh, where we want to be. We want to be Patriot League champions. And so this offseason is very important for us, our players, to continue to improve, develop, grow as players. Uh, we, we were better in different things. Um, uh, we, we were better defensively, our numbers say that, within the league. We were better in terms of assist turnover ratio, our numbers say that, within the league. Uh, but on, you know, on the negative side, offensively, we, we were just not very good. We just couldn't shoot the basketball. We just couldn't make shots. And I think our last four or five games of the year, we scored in the 40s. It's just very, very hard to win. And so the emphasis in the spring has been uh, you know, making shots, offensive execution, um, you know, trying to make our players better and, and their skill set better offensively. I know confidence is a buzzword that gets thrown around probably sometimes too much uh, and maybe at times not enough. But for some of these guys, simply, how, how much is confidence and trying to instill confidence, uh, especially in some of the younger players, uh, because this is a very tough level of basketball they're playing now? Well, I think some of our younger players improved throughout the year. I, I think that, uh, you know, it starts at the point where I think Tillman Dunbar improved uh, throughout the year. Uh, he would be the first to tell you he needs to make perimeter jump shots. You know, he, that's something he has to do. I think Will Kelly improved throughout the year. Will, at the end of the year, was, was playing very well for us, could score the ball inside. Kendall Knorr was showing improvement, hurt his shoulder, and never really got back into the things and had surgery here a few weeks ago. Worst Smith improved from his freshman year to his sophomore year. His numbers were all up rebounding. Uh, scoring, shooting the basketball. So we've made improvements, and that's confidence. And guys are playing more calm. Van, Brandon Vetterini made 16 threes his freshman year, made mid-30s this past season, and he was playing much more confident. So, you know, it's it's the confidence, as you mentioned, Pete, is a tough word, but somewhere along the way you got to have some success to give yourself some confidence. You can't just say to a young guy, hey, have play with confidence. You've got to do something positive. And, and whether that be in a practice uh, situation or in a game situation, um, we just didn't have enough of that, enough of the guys having some success. And, uh, and that's something that we've been trying to work in the off season as well. I know the sports play with the ball, but you and I talked uh, a lot, especially during the month of February, off season wise, uh, the weight room for these guys going to be a critical, critical thing uh, for them. Because as you and I talk throughout the year, you look at the bodies of the Patriot League basketball player. It's the, it, the Patriot League has caught up with the rest of the Joneses. They, these guys have basketball bodies, and that's one of the reasons why better teams in the Patriot League this year were able to go out and compete with, with teams on a national level. Well, there's no question. We, we needed to, to really uh, turn up our strength and conditioning program, and I think Joe Fondell, our strength and conditioning guy, has done a nice job this, this, this spring. Uh, not only strength and conditioning, people, we're trying to make our guys better athletes. And so we were really focused in the spring on um, agility, uh, our core strength, you know, our hips, um, our back, our lower back, our stomach, because that's where you get explosion. That's where you that's where you can generate some speed and jumping ability. And and so we we've tried to emphasize uh, our our core strength, our agility, our speed, our, our mobility, all those types of things as well. As well as our strength, we got to get stronger. We have to get stronger. We've and as well as weight gain. You know, we need some guys to put to put weight on. And uh, for instance, Worth Smith. Has, you know, it was a four-man in a, in a Patriot League at 200 pounds. Just really hard to play that way. You know, James Lupos was 197 in the Patriot League. It's just really hard to play a power forward spot in the league. So we've encouraged several guys to really work hard, eat well, educate them on, uh, well, that's on, on, on nutrition so they can gain good weight, muscle weight, and, uh, and that will help them and help us next year as a, as a team. The, the league is graduating to – NBA draft picks. I don't think there's any question. I mean, some have C.J. McCollum as a lottery pick. 
Mike Muscala at worst, a second-round selection. Loyola, Boston University coming in, uh, even though Jimmy's obviously left Loyola to go to Siena now. And But you're talking about two talented rosters that are going to be added to what is already a talented league. As you look forward, the league has obviously, you know, taking advantage of the opportunity to grow here. Where is this league in your mind, especially when you look at the other mid-majors? Uh, the Patriots really made uh, a lot of statements for itself uh, this decade. Well, it really has. I think this past year we were, I'm not sure where we actually finished, but we were in the top 20 leagues in the country. I think we're 17, 18 at one point in time, which is tremendous for the Patriot League. Um, good players, very, very good skilled players, guys who can all shoot the ball in our league, very good coaches. I think our coaching uh, set is is very outstanding. Guys all do a very good job in the league. It's, and the guys have stayed a while. We've got some veteran coaches in the league. Um, now, we've lost one in, in Jeff at American, but, uh, you know, the other guys in the league have all done a nice job and have all coached for a while now. Um, but I think the players, I mean, we've got very good players in this league. We have a lot of players in this league, Pete, quite frankly, could play at a lot of different institutions, at a lot of different leagues, a lot of different levels that you mentioned, too, that could play at the highest level of basketball every night. And I think there's some other guys in this league that aren't far behind. So uh, it's a very good league, very competitive league, filled with great coaches as well as great players, and that's what makes the league so special. Uh, and then we add two more teams. So as you mentioned, Loyola and, and BU will be will be outstanding members for us, uh, for our league. Uh, and it'll be, it'll be fun to compete against. You all have, as a staff, worked extremely hard uh, on the recruiting trail. And obviously part of that battle is uh, identifying student athletes that, A, can attend the Naval Academy, but yet you've got to find that one that can compete at this level. Uh, just talk about the way your staff has been able to identify what appears to be some uh, terrific young men to give them an opportunity to be candidates here at the Naval Academy. Well, I, I think it's important. We, we've only had one recruiting class, um, and those are the young guys who played this past year, and I think three three of our freshmen really played um, significant roles for us, which is really good. And we've got some other guys who I think will hopefully grow and get better. Our incoming class, we think, is is, is 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 a little bit better, and I think as a coaching staff, and my my uh, charge to our staff is we have, we have to recruit better players every year. Um, you know, I one old, old coach told me one time, recruiting's like shaving. If you don't do it every day, you look like a bum. And and so recruiting is very very important for us. And uh, we've got good young players in the, in the program. It's important. Um, and that we we continue to bring in guys who who can help and who can elevate our program. We want to be we want to be Patriot League champions, and, and uh, in order to do that, we've got to elevate our talent level every year and and keep the guys that we have. And that's been a that's an issue here at, at I think all the academies and, and around college basketball in general. Kids transfer constantly every day. You read the paper, somebody's leaving. They they, they played a lot of minutes, and the team was successful, and they still leave the team that we we play down in. Uh, New Orleans this past year, Tulane, losing six players. Most of the kids started every game and played. and uh, So kids leave, kids kids transfer, and that's we were able, we were fortunate this year, knock on wood so far, to have all our kids stay in, in, in place, and then we continue the, the process of getting better. I mean, even our Final Four MVP this year, Luke Hancock, was a transfer from George Mason. Finally, as a coach, in, you know, as long as you've been doing this, how much professional development still is there for a veteran coach like yourself? You've got a great staff. And, you know, just talk about that development because obviously the Naval Academy and the Patriot League, a, a different animal from places you've been. I, it's, I think as an approach, to that, but where, wherever you're at, uh, whatever league you're in, whatever school you're at, you, there's always professional growth. You know, growth, I talk to my colleagues daily on different things that they're trying to do. And uh, my, my staff just returned from the Final Four in Atlanta and, and saw some different things to, uh, strength training wise, uh, st statistically wise, they saw some different things that we might be able to implement. And I think uh, if you don't do that, you get stale. Uh, and so we, I talk to my colleagues. I visit with them in, in May and June throughout the summer. I like to sit down with a group of guys and, 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 and share ideas and exchange ideas. And because I think it's important. I, I think you know, you get better, you get worse, you never stay the same. And so for us, for me personally, and for our staff, we always try to. Talk to other staffs different, at different institutions that uh, that we feel like that you know have some things in common with what, 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 what we're all about, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to improve as a staff as well. Appreciate the time. Best of luck here in the off season. Thank you, Pete. It's Navy head coach Ed DeCellis as the mids get ready to attack the off season. As always, for more information about Navy men's basketball, go to www.navysports.com.